Okay, so today's interview uh, with Jackie, I'm, I'm just going to set the scene a little bit first. Ultimately, um, Jackie has been going through one of the first stages on our roadmap, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, uh, called Clarity. Clarity is ultimately about establishing some quick wins and seeing some great rewards by taking relatively simple steps in a practice. And uh, Jackie's going to talk a little bit more about where she's at, where she's been, um, and uh, hopefully uh, give you some inspiration to, to make some of those changes yourself in your practice. Right, I'm going to just uh, give you a, an overview of the agenda. Um, I'll come on to what that is in a moment. So first of all, I'm going to introduce myself and then I will, of course, introduce Jackie. Uh, for those of you, because I am seeing a lot of uh, names that I'm not familiar with here, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction about who AVN are, what we do, why we do it. Um, we'll have the interview with Jackie. I would love, by the way, for you to be posting questions in that you'd like to ask Jackie yourself. We will address those questions a little bit later on. Um, I, I hope you don't mind, but I'd love also to share with you an opportunity uh, for you to improve your practice. I'll share with you what that means a little bit later on. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I'd like to use this as a bit of a... Um, uh, a springboard if you like to to help you make some changes to your practice by us working a little bit closer together um so your questions and uh, jackie uh, will will answer those to the best of her abilities and uh, if if um you know if i can be of any help with that then great as well but obviously your questions are going to be targeted at jackie and then i've got a, uh, a bonus for you at the end as well uh, a few admin things i just want to highlight the fact that we record uh, these webinars in fact I'm just going to double check that it is recording otherwise I will be in trouble so forgive me for just a moment while I just verify that this is being recorded just going to minimize that uh, it is recording indeed so that's cool Okay, so we record this. Uh, most people ask us, uh, sorry, most people, we get many requests for this to be um, sent out as, as the recording afterwards. Now, we do record it. The reality is that the people who ask for it to be sent out to them, we can track whether they've watched this or not, simply because it goes on YouTube as an unlisted. The reality is people never get around to watching it. It always goes on that should-do list. I'm sure we've all got huge should-do lists and um, because it's recorded then you think yeah I can see that tomorrow or I'll see that next week and and the reality is it never happens so my recommendation is stand here till the end uh, I'm going to cap it to 60 minutes I'll do my best to do that anyway the question and answers uh, are in your court then of course so uh, if that goes over that's fair enough um, actually a couple more things on admin um, You've got a Q&A box and you've also got a chat box. My preference is uh, use the Q&A box to put your questions in. That way we can actually tick off to say we've answered them. So if you're not sure where that is, if you wave the mouse over the screen that you're seeing right now, you should see some icons appear. One of them says Q&A. Uh, and the other one, you've got the option to uh, chat as well. So the chat box really is, I'll be asking you a few maybe yes, no questions throughout. Can we just test that A, you can all hear me, and also that uh, you can use the chat box. So first of all, click to open your chat box. I would like very much for you to change where it says two uh, from where it currently says all panelists to all panelists and attendees. That way we can all see what each other are typing. And then uh, just pop in there your name. That will tell me that you can all hear and you've all been able to, uh, to, to access the chat box. So thanks, Angela. Could, uh, brilliant. Okay, so getting lots of names in there. Keep them coming. Don't stop just because a few have done it. I'd like just to make sure that everybody on here uh, can hear me. Okay, so I think I have, um, that, that's brilliant, lots coming in. Some of you, by the way, I'm seeing that you haven't changed it from all panellists to all panellists and attendees, so uh, just make sure you make that change, otherwise um, everybody else can, can barely see uh, anything coming in. Right, okay, um, by all means keep those coming in as well. Right, then, one of the things I always mention on here, so forgive me if you've seen this before, is that... Uh, we have a set of values here at AVN. I shall share those in a little bit more detail with you. One of them, however, is this one, Keep Evolving. I'm just going to highlight that. Uh, if it highlights, let's 
seem to be highlighted. Why not? What's the matter with that? Anyway, the keep evolving is the bottom right. Um, what we mean by that is um, I'm a, a huge fan of obviously evolving the brain through learning and development. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter how much you learn and read books and attend courses. It's what you do with that learning that's important. And I'm sure you'll agree with that. Uh, so that the little symbol there about comfort zone is sometimes we need to take action that might be a little bit uncomfortable to stretch ourselves outside of our comfort zone. Um, now, in terms of this webinar, like I say, over 100 people have registered to attend that. That's fantastic. Um, for me, registering to attend, uh, attend is one thing. Uh, sitting there in the background with a bit of background noise while you're getting on with other stuff, really, it doesn't float my boat to think I'm just background noise. So can you just uh, tell me in that chat box, are you here to actively listen and take some action off the back of this webinar or are you just here to passively listen and have a bit of background noise so uh, for my benefit just type in active or passive into the chat box while I figure out why this won't work here we go so those two words either passive or active right that's brilliant thank you very much it does fill me with um Lots more enthusiasm to see that people are going to actively listen to me. So thank you for that. Right then. Um, brilliant. And, uh, okay, they're all coming in still. Fantastic. I just want to take a moment to, to inspire you. We're going to listen to Jackie's story very shortly. But um, Jackie is, is one of many people that we've worked with. And um, most people, when they, they join us, they, they all have similar challenges in their practice when they join us. Uh, this next slide really is, a, a we've just recorded some of the ones from a, a very recent course that we, we ran. Um, so for example, we can see here from Stephen, he was working with a high number of low yielding clients, high time consumption, firefighting, long hours in his business. They were the challenges he's facing, or he was facing. Um, Denise there, uh, lack of direction, um, staff not feeling valued, uh, Shahid uh, felt that there wasn't enough time, had to take work home. I'm sure you can relate to some of these things that are happening now. Clients constantly calling for updates. Um, all of those typical types of problems that people have. Um, I want you to know that you know if you're experiencing any of these, number one, you're not alone. Um, sometimes we, we take comfort in the fact and just hearing that actually other people have got similar challenges to me, you know, not alone. And that's really part of this AVN uh, culture here that we can, we can be open and share that and just realize that other people are, are having similar challenges, but also we can learn how did they overcome those challenges. Um, one of the master classes that we ran, uh, we, we, we always ask people to complete this particular form, which is about what are the, what's the impact that you feel that you might get from uh, attending this particular session. So we've shared lots of great value in this uh, masterclass. We've given people lots of actions that they can take away and then we ask them to extrapolate by implementing those actions over the next three years, what are the type of impacts that you feel that you will see? And as you can see on there, there were some probably more realistic uh, values put in there than others. I did say six million uh, in there as well as maybe on the lower end, there was about a £76,000 increase as well. On revenue, that's the top line, of course, uh, over the next three years. So some more conservative, some much more optimistic than others. The reality is, of course, um, when you've been on a course like the Masterclass, you're bound to come away quite optimistic, feeling that you can take over the world. So what's the reality? Well, uh, we've recently started recording this as well. So six weeks later, when we catch up with people, we ask them, the actions that you've implemented, what's, the, what's been the impact on your practice? So these are, again, some of the comments. So feeling much more in control, the practice beginning to feel more like a business, uh, a great platform to share with other accountants, uh, confidence, uh, value-driven firm, not just compliance, uh, an extra 10,000 K per month from Brian. Um, so I, I just wanted to really inspire you that actually – despite having those similar challenges that I'm sure many of you might be facing right now in your practice. It doesn't have to be like that. There is a better way. Um, please do take notes during this session as well. Uh, I'm sure Jackie will be sharing some great insights that you can maybe go and replicate in your practice straight away.
A little bit about me, uh, I'm Shane Lucas, I'm Managing Director of AVN, I've been part of AVN since 1998 when it was first set up by Steve. Um, I'm uh, author of a few books, um, what, the reason for this particular um, photograph here is that one of the things I'm incredibly passionate about is enabling better choice for people. Now there's, there are a, a few different sort of examples of that but in, in this context it's really enabling people better choice about their lifestyle outside of their business. I run a business that gives me the lifestyle that I want. I don't need to work all the hours uh, that I possibly can. Sometimes I enjoy doing that but ultimately it's about choice isn't it? If I want an early start or late finish that's about choice. I don't have to do that. I have the choice of spending time seeing my kids at sports day all of those things, and I aim to help accountants in practice achieve the lifestyle choices outside of their business that they want. The reason for this photograph is that some personal lifestyle choices that are important to me are spending much more time with my family um, and uh, exploring the world, and that, that photograph nicely combines a couple of things there. My, my parents uh, and I have always had a, a passion for China, the Great Wall, and we did a tour of China earlier this year, so that really that just represents me uh, demonstrating that uh, you know it's a possibility these are some of the books that uh, i've authored and co-authored um my uk amazon number one best-selling book is this one what's next for accountants uh, incredibly proud of that because it stayed at number one for three and a half weeks the other one i'm incredibly proud about it says coming soon on that slide that's an out-of-date slide because it was launched uh, a couple of months ago better business better life better world i co-authored that with a number of business leaders from around the world 62 authors in total myself included in that and uh, that, that's a fantastic book that everybody's giving insights answering the question what advice would you give to your grandchildren if you could leave them that kind of legacy to help them build a better business have a better life and a better world and 62 people have, have basically answered that question in that book so it's an incredibly insightful inspiring book to read i can't give you a copy of that book because every book every copy of that book that's sold goes to charity if you're interested in uh, donating 10 pounds to get a copy of that book then i will happily post you a copy of that out um so if that's something that you're interested in in getting type b1g1 into the box right now and what we'll do is we'll after this webinar we will pick up the phone just ask you to donate that 10 pounds and we'll get you a copy out alternatively of course you can get it on amazon uh, a lesser donation goes to the charity but ultimately it's a donation will still go to charity so just type b1g1 into the the, uh, the box right now and uh, we can arrange that by all means also if you haven't had a copy of my book the what's next for accountants i will more than happily send you a copy of that for free anyway in the post as a physical copy so uh, if that's something you're interested in just type book and then i can determine the difference so please do that now in the chat box in the book b1g1 or both okay so i've got both from okay so i've got yeah, okay, so I'm getting quite a few coming in there. That's cool. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so we will make sure those go out. No problem at all. Right, a little bit about uh, AVN then. So AVN, we stand for Inspiring Accountants, Inspiring Accountants to become much more inspiring to the clients that they work with, helping them make a profound difference helping the accountants that we work with make a profound difference to their clients as well as building a business themselves from their accounting practice that's going to give them the lifestyle that they want. Our primary um, customer is an accountant in practice. and We recognize that by helping them first build a much more sustainable, profitable, more enjoyable accountancy practice and then giving them the skills to, to better support and train their clients, then we're helping many more businesses um, largely from around the UK to become much more successful and enjoyable. Behind all of those accountancy practices and all of those clients' businesses, there are of course families and really we're, we're effectively helping um, achieve that better lifestyle, not just for the business owner but for their entire families as well. Through all of those activities, uh, we also encourage people to uh, to do more for the wider community. We're huge advocates of B1G1, 
because B1, G1 um, do uh, lots of vetting to ensure that every single penny that goes to any of the projects, the charity causes that they're behind, every single penny goes exactly to the people who need it rather than um, these non-for-profits that, you know, it comes out in the, the wash that actually they're, they're taking quite a chunk. B1, G1 do lots of great vetting to make sure that it goes exactly where you expect it to go. So we're huge advocates of B1, G1. Some of the things that we do internally, by the way, um, we get together on a quarterly basis and determine uh, how are we going to make a difference throughout the world um, through different activities that we do. Uh, the most pertinent one on this for um, this webinar is that for every attendee of any of our webinars, uh, a child in Cambodia gets access to a school book for a week. So uh, all of you that have attended today, thank you very much. Uh, we will just simply make that happen now off the back of you attending this webinar. So thank you for doing that. Right, okay, uh, one last slide about AVN. We are a coaching and training organization for accountants. Uh, we're largely UK-wide. We do have accountants from around the world joining us, but ultimately we, we focus uh, most efforts on the UK. Um, we take accountants through a seven-stage uh, signature roadmap uh, supported by REACH. I should talk about that later. We've helped to date over 2,700 accountants in practice. We've helped them better serve their clients, the businesses that they work with. So to date, we've helped over 450,000 of those. And through our impacts with B1G1, and this is collected through the AVM membership, we've impacted on over 9 million lives. Uh, we're celebrating 20 years this year as well. Right, I mentioned me doing stuff for the kids. One final slide about me, and then we're going to move on to Jackie. This is a photograph of um, me and the family climbing, in this particular case, Ben Nevis. Uh, we set a bit of a goal, thanks to my son there, Caden, who said that he wanted to climb Everest, and uh, we agreed that we would start with some of the smaller mountains in the UK. Uh, so we've set a goal to climb every single mountain in the UK. Now, climbing a mountain can be quite a mammoth task, can't it? And, um, you know, before the kids wanted to get involved, I'd climbed lots of mountains myself. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm a bit of a, you know, I'll just march straight on up there um, at a fairly fast pace. Um, and I'll get to the top and I'll, I'll celebrate that and then I shall march all the way back down again. Now, obviously, going with the kids, that's a very, very different journey, isn't it? Uh, the kids move at a much steadier pace. Uh, they also like to explore. They like to enjoy the journey as much as the destination. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because if I wanted to get to the top of that mountain quicker, I could choose to do that without the kids, but would I have as much fun? Uh, that's, um, it would defeat the object in this case. The interviews that I'm going to be doing in this series of interviews, so I'm starting with Jackie, I'm interviewing people that have effectively climbed their mountain. In other words, they've transformed their practice or are in the process of transforming their practice. They all move at very different paces. Uh, some of them have decided that uh, they're going to let go of some of the team members that they felt have held them back. Other people have decided just to, to spend that extra bit of time, take the journey slower, but actually bring their team along. So everybody has a different story to tell. Um, ultimately, they're all going to achieve their personal journey, but it's going to be at different rates, uh, different paces. And I think you'll perhaps relate more to some of the interviewees than others. So I just want to set that scene. Ultimately, it's about enjoying the journey. It's not just about the destination, is it? Okay, so um, oh, for some reason, my slides aren't progressing as quickly as I'd like. Jackie, who I'm just about to introduce, trust me, um, is uh, right at the very beginning, really, of the avian journey. Uh, she's been going through what we call clarity. Clarity really is about ascertaining three key things. What One is What's the vision that you really want to achieve for your practice? And getting that really cemented and then reverse engineering that to find out what's involved in, in achieving that vision. Uh, other things then we focus on are how to better price your services, getting a pricing strategy in place, and really who are you going to market your services to? Now there are a few other things included in there, but ultimately we find that they're the key three key strategies that we need to get in place so that somebody's much more able to make the changes that they need in their practice. 
As you listen to my interview with Jackie, please do ask questions, put them in the box. Uh, rem I've, I've said chat box in there, disregard that. You may have noticed from my voice, I'm on the, the, the back end of suffering man flu, so forgive me if my brain's not functioning. Don't put them in chat box, put them in the Q&A box. Right then, okay, I am now going to switch off my screen share and invite Jackie to uh, join us. So, hello, Jackie. Hello. Uh, we didn't want to risk Jackie losing her video connection, so Jackie's just sat out of the way for the time being. So thank you for that, Jackie. Right then, okay. So this is Jackie. Um, Jackie, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, actually, if you don't mind, and just tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, a little bit about your practice, the size of it, and um, I suppose how long you've been in practice as well. So over to you, Jackie. Okay, um, so I, start, I qualified in 2003 um, and I set up my practice straight away, starting with just bookkeeping services and then moved on to accounts, etc. Um, obviously, from my accent, I'm based in South Wales, so hopefully you can understand me. <laughs> um, we now, um, we've got a practice of six. Um, I think we've got about 160 clients, um, so we're quite small. Um, it is a, a family practice. My daughter also qualified as an accountant um, after me, um, came to work for me, and um, she stayed put. Um, so she's my practice manager. She's currently off on maternity leave. She's just had um, our first grandchild, so um, um, Heather will be back in a few months' time. Um, and Richard, my husband, also decided he joined the team about two years ago after lots of um, arm bending and uh, everything else. Um, so he's our resident bookkeeper. So um, he's not qualified, but um, he does the data entry and he answers the phone, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a nice family business with um, some excellent team members to back us up. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about JDH. So a quick reminder, how long have you been in, in business altogether? 2003, so 15 years, right. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Could you just tell us a little bit about, um, I mean, obviously we're, we're, we're here to, I suppose, be inspired about some of the successes you made, but really we need to find out where you were at before you started seeing those, those, um, those successes. So just tell us a little bit about some of the problems that you were facing, um, say, 12 months ago before you kind of came to AVN. Yes, um, we'd, me and Heather had decided um, about two years ago that, things had to change in the accounts practice. We, we couldn't cope with the, um, the stress that we were under. It appeared to be all the time, all year round. Um, we never had enough time to make sure that we did everything properly. Um, we didn't feel we were earning enough. Um, we were working ridiculously long hours and the deadlines were just there all the time. Um, we also didn't feel valued by people. Um, we felt like the clients just saw us as another burden. Um, <clears throat> you know, they, they didn't really want to pay their bill. They didn't understand what we did and why they had to um, um, pay their bill and, you know, why we were charging the price that we were charging. Um, some of our clients weren't very nice. Um, they were difficult to work with. So that was an extra stress um, on top of all the other stresses that we were facing. Um, we were just tired and worn out all the time. And so we're our team really. So um, I don't think we had the enthusiasm that we needed to, um, to do a good job of anything we were doing. Um, it was very um, um, depressing at times. We did feel we wanted to close the practice. Um, thank goodness me and Heather didn't feel like that at the same time. Otherwise, JDH probably wouldn't be here now. Um, but we, we both sort of bolstered each other to just keep going. Um, but we decided two years ago that um, we needed to change things dramatically. So we'd already made a start on doing a few changes, things that we knew needed to change, but we didn't know what else to do. We, we, we've made a few changes, but we knew there was more that we would be able to do, but we didn't know what to do it or how to do it. So um, that's when we came in contact with AVN, and that's when we decided we might give them a try and see what they um, had to offer. <clears throat> Just staying with that, though, what, what um, I mean, you, you talked about pretty much being ready to leave and, and, and chuck it in, but um, mm. I, I suppose what was the impact it was having on you from a personal point of view? I mean, I've just talked about mm. lifestyle, haven't I? Um, yeah. 
you know, uh, I'm a great believer in, you know, a, a business should work for you, not the other way around. Yes. Um, how was it impacting on your personal life? Um, everything. Um, strained marriage relationships because my husband constantly said I was working, um, you know, too many hours and the weekends and, um, you know, we never had enough time together. Um, <clears throat> the doctor told me that I was at the end stages of exhaustion, um, that I needed to change my lifestyle because I'd been pushing myself for too many years um, for too long. Um, family, not having enough, enough time with the family to be able to um, really feel life had a good meaning. Um, I've got elderly parents, they've both got health problems, um, both mental and physical health problems. Um, the guilt there of not helping them more and um, being there to be able to um, um, give them a, a good retirement. Um, and recently I've become a granny as well, so I've got a very busy personal life. I have other commitments as well in my personal life. Um, and really the business was first and everything else took whatever was left of my energy and my time. Um, so I had a constant feeling of just feeling guilty that I wasn't a good enough wife, a good enough mother, a good enough daughter, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the personal impact that the business had on me. <clears throat> what, um, what were the other things that you, uh, you've mentioned AVM, but I'll, I'll come on to AVM very shortly, of course, but what else had you looked at? What else had you tried to sort of improve things in your practice? Um, well, we knew that um, the practice is always based on the clients. Um, and we, very, we knew that our clients weren't great clients. Um, we, we knew we needed to attract better clients, um, ones that would bring their paperwork in on time, uh, ones that wouldn't complain about having to pay their bills, um, ones that were nice people to work with. Um, so we'd recognise that our clients needed to change, and that was a big um, sort of um, thing that we started working on. Um, so we, we, did, we started getting rid of some of our um, really bad clients and feeling the relief of not having to answer the phone to them um, and argue over different things, etc. Um, so clients, I think, were the, the, the main part that we'd started work on. Um, and we got rid of um, the worst of them, but we wanted to be able to attract better clients. Um, we wanted to be able to charge higher fees. Um, we wanted to know we were going to get paid for the work that we were doing um, and that, that, that wouldn't be a battle. So, um, so that's what we'd recognised before we'd started um, uh, with AVM. Can I just ask the audience for a moment, uh, listening, can you relate to the stuff that Jackie's been talking about here? Just give me a yes or a no in the chat box. You know, have you experienced any of the challenges that she's mentioned either in your lifestyle or, of course, you know, the cause of that, which is the practice. Just give us a yes or no. Oh, sorry, I've got the wrong thing loaded up. So you have lots of yeses, actually. Um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, keep those coming in, guys. Don't just, don't just let the others uh, type them in. I can see that there's quite a few of you answered that, but not, uh, not everybody. Even if it's a no, if you're living the dream, fair enough. You know, that, that's great, but... Um, Okay, that's <laughs> three exclamation marks on there, John. Okay, so point taken. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, all right. So quite a few of you uh, can obviously relate to this stuff. Would you um, just give us a flavour? What's it like now? Um, so, uh, well, I'll leave you that really. What's your practice looking like right now? <laughs> Um, it's a lot better. It's a lot, lot better than um, what I've just described. Um, I am aware from EVM that I've got a long way to go yet because I, I am only on the first step. I've just finished the first step, but the, the impact is, um, has been so positive. Um, it's, it's amazing, really. Um, I am less stressed. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm not as um, stress-free as I could be if my practice manager wasn't um, on maternity leave. <laughs> um, but um, when she comes back, it's going to be a lot easier again. Um, but I'm definitely less stressed than I was. Um, I don't feel um, overwhelmed as much as I used to feel with the deadlines and the, um, um, you know, just, just keeping on top of everything. Um, I found that now we're more efficient, uh, we're definitely more efficient, um, we've got more time, 
um, to be able to spend on more important things. Um, getting the deadlines done is very important, of course, but we need to be able to move the business forward and um, make informed choices to be able to sit and think about things and work out where we want the business to go in the next year. Um, never had the time for that before um, because we were too busy fighting and arguing with our bad clients, basically. Um, we've got great clients that we work with. Um, we've um, increased our prices a little bit to uh, make up for the clients that we got rid of. Um, but they're easier to work with. They bring their paperwork in on time. Um, you know, we give all our clients a slot during the year where they, they bring their paperwork in and if they don't, they get fined, <laughs> um, which gives them an incentive to bring their paperwork in. Um, clients are great to work with. They're nice people. Um, there's lots of good people out there. You, we, you just need to find them, people who are interested in their business and they want to make a difference in their business. So they're the ones you want to work with. Um, one of the biggest things I've noticed in the last year is um, I've got more money in the bank and that is always a bonus. Um, whereas before we used to worry about whether we would get paid for a job and that was demoralizing in itself, you know, wondering whether we were going to get paid when we'd finished the job. Um, we've got much more money in the bank. Um, we don't worry about it. Um, that the cash flow in the business is fantastic. Um, and that, of course, is one less stress to worry about um, when you're running a business to know that you're going to get paid. Um, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, the team is more enthusiastic. Um, they're working with better people. They're enjoying um, their work. Um, we just um, we're just happy to stay put now, and um, we've got an incentive to work on the accounts practice and. Um, just get everything streamlined, everything um, to where we, we want it to be. We know the accounts practice will be worth more. Um, if we wanted to retire, we would be able to sell it for a higher price. We've got lots of incentives to do that, um, but it's been phenomenal, the changes that we've um, seen in just stage one of our journey with ABN. You, you, you're obviously, um, you, you've painted a fantastic picture there. Um, has it been a walk in the park or has it been a tough journey? I'm, I'm not trying to put words either way. I'm not trying to lead you. There. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's painful. It, it has been painful at times. Um, you know, you've, you've got to look at your accounts practice good and hard and maybe see areas that you, you'd like to think are better, but they're not. Um, it's a painful self-analysis sometimes um, of what you've got. Um, and it's out of it's out of my comfort zone, really, because I'm being asked to do things that I'm not used to doing. Um, you know, the compliance work and everything that comes within accounts practice is what accountants are used to doing. But it's thinking outside the box and having to make these changes. And um, sometimes it's quite scary um, and it's challenging as well. But the results are still worth it. Um, I, I wouldn't paint a picture that it's an easy stage to go through, but um, as I learned on the masterclass, and I'm not going to say too much about it, <laughs> um, but as I learned on the masterclass, you either stay where you are and you stay miserable and stressed for the rest of your life um, or go and find another career, um, <laughs> or you, you take up the challenge and you, um, you work with them. Um, and it's, it's hard finding the time to do it, but you unless you find the time to do it you, you you're, ne you're just going to stay where you are and you're just going to be miserable um that's where i was um a year to two years ago and um i'm not in that place now that's the important thing so how's this impacting on your lifestyle outside of the business now um it's much much better um i did get to the point um i mean my main goal in doing all of this is that i can work less um, you know, I've been working, um, you know, stupid hours, evenings, weekends, you know, um, all of that had to change for my health sake. Um, so the impact on that is that I know, or I have been until um, Heather went off on maternity leave, um, working four days a week, which means, you know, I freed up a whole day a week, plus I'm not working weekends either. So um, it's tipping the work life balance. Um, four days work and three days, um, you know, of, um, you know, looking after my family and other things I need to do. Um, my next goal uh, within the next year is to get down to three days a week. Um, and I think my balance will be right then. 
um, and you know as my parents need more help etc cetera, etc cetera, that will tip the balance and, um, and and that will be right for me um, you know I I would like to earn more and I'm working on that and that that will um, and that, that will come with the, the changes I'm making now um, but it's not all about money for me um, I've got a comfortable lifestyle and um, you know I've got no mortgage etc so um, it's not all about money it's about time with me and um, that's the the process I want more time to do other things rather than just be pushing paper around my desk yes okay. have your clients seen a difference um, in, in the way that you work with them what, what's what's the impact that it's had on them yeah um well i think they can feel our enthusiasm um you know i think that rubs off um because they they sometimes are tired and fed up in, their, in running their businesses and um i think they they enjoy coming to, to see us which is nice um they enjoy our meetings together and um, they always feel a lot better afterwards um i've got some fantastic testimonials from some of them over the last year um which really encourage me to keep going in my changes and um, and things that I'm doing um, and we try and we try and go the extra mile this is what AVN teaches us and um, you know by um, doing extra things for them um, so like my calendar is one which I'm, I'm going to give that was my little idea um, of um, designing a calendar and giving giving each individual client a calendar with their own deadlines for the year which they can have up on their wall and they can um, they know when the paperwork is due, what they need to bring in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and a few have commented on that, you know, that um, they've never seen another accountant do that. Um, but it's, um, um, it's nice that they've got um, constant deadlines that they need to remember. And um, they've also got a reminder of us on their wall every day when they look at their calendar with what they've got to do, they reminded that they've got a good accountant to help them. So just tell me a little bit about that. I mean, that must have been a, a great wow, but you say that's quite, I mean, it must be quite tailored to each, at least per year end, is it? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, we, we, we put the basic deadlines in. We get them printed like um, pay as you earn, you know, pay your pay as you earn on the 19th of the month and things like that. That's in there for everyone. Um, but then what we do is um, we, we've got um, our deadline um, spreadsheet with when we want our clients to bring their paperwork in. Um, so within that calendar, there will be handwritten um, deadlines for them throughout the year as to when we want the paperwork um, and inside the calendar we had the added idea of making um, like a tick list because um, there's nothing worse than getting half the paperwork in um, and then you can't you can't complete the job because half the bank statements are missing you know there's the, we all know what that's like um, so within the calendar is a tick list that they can fill in themselves with the different bank accounts that they've got and credit card statements that they can make so that before they bring in their paperwork they've completed that tick list and we're not chasing them um, for the missing information to complete the job so it's streamlining the process and um, and it's helping them um, and it's helping us as well oh good stuff good stuff um how much help and support have you had and maybe um, needed from AVN to, to make some of these changes would you say? Um, we do need support um, we can come up with ideas ourselves um, but not the range of knowledge and skills that AVN has got um, what I like about AVN is that um, the members of AVN are accountants um, you know you have to have been through our situation to understand what it's like to have experienced it and to find the answers that are going to work um, so as I said previously we could have um, we did make some changes to our accounts practice on our own um, but not enough not enough to get to that dream you know of, of having less time in the accounts practice it running smoothly we couldn't do all that on our own um, the knowledge and the skills um, from AVN are amazing, um, but it's also the um, being held to account um, phone calls every month because I am still a very busy person. Um, and because I know I've got a phone call with AVN every month to check up on my progress to see what have I accomplished this month um, compared with last month, um, that makes me find the time um, to keep that 
um, momentum. Um, I think if I didn't have that constant um, backup and support from AVN, I might be tempted still to put a few things on the back boiler because something is more urgent. Um, and you can't have that mindset. You have to buy up the time to do it and you have to keep moving forwards. Um, so the support and the constant um, responsibility and accountability from EVN, um, it helps me to stay on track. Brilliant. Okay. Um, just a quick question again for um, our audience listening. Um, just give me a yes or no in the, the chat box. You know, if, you, if you've been inspired by listening to, to Jackie and you'd love to see some of the uh, the successes, the quick wins that Jackie's had in her practice. Replicating your practice gives a yes or <laughs> All right. Before I even finished asking the question, loads of those are coming in, so that's fantastic. Uh, so again, just give us a, a yes or a no. I'm, I'm not going to be funny if you put a no in there. It'll, um, it, it'll give us a flavour for where you're at in your practice. Okay, so there are lots of yeses coming in there. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so I'm, I've got a... Um, well... I suppose my final question to you before I hand it over to um, the the questions that have been appearing in the Q&A. Um, sorry, I just wanted to see what the questions were. Uh, yeah, okay, so I've had an anonymous one. I'm not sure why it's anonymous, but it doesn't matter. It's an anonymous one, and I've had one from Claire so far. Um, there are other couple of things in the chat box, but uh, sorry, in the Q&A, but they're not necessarily questions. So, oh, okay, so more questions are coming in. That's great. Remember to pop your questions in there because we will address those very shortly. My next question for Jackie then right now is, uh, Jackie, tell me, what would you say has been the most um, instrumental in terms of getting you to where you are right now? Oh, I don't know. That's a very broad question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can, I can see how I felt before I went to the masterclass. Um, I, I would like to be able to say that if I can. Um, it, it was a turning point. The masterclass was a turning point when um, I attended. Um, I decided that I would go with my uh, practice manager, Heather, because I felt if I went, um, I wouldn't be able to explain to um, her three whole days of information. So we went together. Um, and our feeling before we went was, how do we find the time to take three days out of our busy schedules to even go and attend? That was our first point. Um, and our second point was, you know, is this going to be an absolute waste of time? Because um, I'm a very impatient person. Um, I'm really, really busy. So don't waste my time. You know, that, that's, that's who I am, unfortunately. Um, so we went in with um, a very sceptical sort of attitude, really, um, and we were absolutely blown away by it. Um, it gave us hope that there was hope for us, that there was hope for our, um, just our practice and our personal lives. Um, I can't remember huge amounts about the masterclass, except inside I changed. I, my emotions, I had more um, just hope that I could that I could do this, that I didn't need to um, give up and um, crawl into a corner, basically. <laughs> um, and um, it was absolutely great. Um, I think that was the changing point. That was the turning point. Um, we signed up straight away because we knew if we put it on the back boiler and said we get round to it in a few months' time, we wouldn't. So we just signed up there and then um, and, um, and decided we would get to work straight away. Um, and um, that was it. Within months, we could feel, you know, that things were getting better. Um, and um, as I say, the skills, the, the, the tools that we get to, to use, everything is just, um, it just makes a difference. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, right. Okay. So we, we will come on to those questions and answers in a moment, but I've just got another couple of questions to ask. I just want to make sure that I share my screen now. I've just got a couple of slides that I shall use. Uh, oops, wrong button. Right, just stick that there. So, my question really uh, to the audience is, um, I've sort of asked this, so forgive me for the repetition, but who wants to see some change in their practice? Just give us a me or a yes, it doesn't matter. I'm looking at my chat box now. Okay. Um, my next one, forgive the language, who wants to change? 
their practice. <laughs> okay, well look, here's the reason for asking that question. Because quite often, we all want to see some change, don't we? But we're not necessarily prepared to, um, to change ourselves. And of course, it all starts with changing ourselves, doesn't it? Making that change, as Gandhi says, be the change you want to see. And of course, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting different results, isn't it? Um, what I'd like you to do right now is just give me a flavour of what your aspiration is right now for your practice. I, I, many of you have related to some of the challenges that Jackie's mentioned. I haven't asked you where you are right now in your practice. For all I know, you could have a million pound practice uh, working a three day week or you may be uh, much lower, much higher. Maybe you know, you're on 50k and working 60, 70, 80 hours. Um, I don't know what that is right now, but give us a flavour for what of these three options you would love to get in place right now. Do you want to build a million pound practice on a three day week? Do you want to make it a five million pound more of an empire um, on a, a one day a week effectively? Do you just want to get a better lifestyle in place uh, or do you not want to change? So give us an A, B, C or D in there. Okay. So, okay, I mean, at a glance, yeah, most of you are kind of plump for the C, which is understandable. And what we tend to find is actually people just want to get better before they start striving uh, much bigger. Um, but yeah, I can see that um, many of you, we've got some A's and B's, of course, in there. I'm not seeing a D, which kind of infers that. Um, you know, you all want to see some improvements in your practice striving towards one of these. So what I'd like you to do right now, I don't know whether you have a paper diary or an online diary, but I'd like you to just check to see if you have the 2nd to the 4th of October free in your diary. If that is free, type in free in the box. If it's not free, just type in not free and that will give you, sorry, it will give me a, a flavour as to your availability. So I'm getting a few not freeze at the moment. Okay, so I've got, um, so I'm getting a few freeze coming in there right now and some not freeze, that's fair enough. Yeah, okay, school week is about that time, you're quite right. So, some freeze there, okay. What I want to do also, and I thought I'd put it in here, is uh, I've got another date for you to check, because obviously that date is approaching. Um, so forgive me, I'm just gonna grab that date again now. The second one is for March. So, if you have, availability between the 12th and 14th of March. I want you to type in March so I don't get these confused. So 12th to the 14th of March, 2019. Type in March if that is free. Okay. Okay, so that's fantastic. And most of you who said you weren't free for the October one certainly have got availability in March. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, all right, so I'd like you to invite, that, that period is, is ultimately our masterclass. And um, really, I'd like to invite you to attend that masterclass. You've just heard Jackie talking about it being instrumental. I didn't ask her to tell you that the masterclass was. She could have said it was uh, a dream she had one night. I don't know. But ultimately, let me, <laughs> let me just share with you briefly about what the masterclass is. I suppose if we look at features, benefits and outcomes, features are it is um, three days of intensive training. And that amounts to literally 21 hours of training and reskilling training about what you could be delivering in your practice how to add much more value how to get your pricing right how to get your positioning right how to get your team on board all of those things we encapsulate into the 21 hours of training obviously you get cpd for that as well um, meals are included we buy you a few drinks as well in the evening uh, we talk about one of the threats facing the profession right now and in the not too distant future as well so you've got a good flavor for what's happening within the profession 
Uh, in fact, I see a few names on here uh, as well who have been to Massive Fast Fair recently, so please do um, contribute on here as well if that is something that you would advocate for the others. Uh, in terms of benefits, I mean, obviously, uh, the, the benefits are that we've got some industry leaders in the room as well. So we've got some globally accepted uh, industry leaders in the room, Steve Pipe, uh, myself, uh, we've also got some uh, guests. We've got Michael Hem, who was um, who was the fastest to achieve avian excellence within his practice. We've got uh, Andrew James, who um, has made some fantastic changes to his practice, but over a steady pace. So in other words, we've got two extremes in there, a very steady paced individual who's made some incremental changes to his practice over a period of time. And we've got somebody who absolutely, you know, stormed up that mountain, if you like, at full pace. Um, with his team fully supporting him actually and you know unlike my comments earlier about I could leave the kids behind and storm up here he managed to get his team on board and get them uh, fully embracing this stuff as well so some great stories to listen to some great successes uh, and lots of benefits on there in terms of the outcomes I mean I shared some of them at the very beginning you know much more confidence you've heard um, Jackie talking about how it's put much more cash in her bank account uh, from the profits that she's now making. She's getting the money in. Uh, people come away from Masterclass with much more uh, hope, lots of great actions that they can implement and some fantastic strategies that are going to help them get much more clarity, position their practice better, add more value, get the team on board, get the systems in place, raise their profile, and deliver much more consultancy work to their clients as well to help them. So that's ultimately what Masterclass is about. I would like you to, again, right now, just before going to the questions for Jackie, uh, are you going to take the red pill or the blue pill? Are you going to say, right, I'm in, I'm going to make some positive action now, change my practice for the better, or are you just going to forget about this, go back to doing what you've always done and hope that things will get better? So give me an I'm in if you are prepared to take that positive action and attend one of our upcoming Masterclasses. So I've got some ins coming in. Uh, red pill, okay, that'll suffice. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, you're already booked. That's fair enough, Kim. And you're looking forward to it. Fantastic. Um, okay, any more before we move on? <clears throat> so make a decision, guys. These things don't... Um, attending in October, that's cool. Andrew, thank you for that. Maybe red. Jerry put maybe red. What's what's the, uh, the the challenge? If you if you feel happy to share that, maybe it's a question that you could ask in the Q and A or um, or share it in here. Just curious about the maybe. Uh, took the red pill. All right. Okay, that's cool, Andy. Although you'll find if you attended masterclass more than a year ago, it's changed significantly. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much for that. What I'd like to do now is move back on to those questions. Uh, if you've put an in um, or a red pill, then I will come back to you at the very end uh, of this session. So for now, let's go back to Jackie. Jackie, there's a few questions appeared in the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, listen, if you've got any more questions that you would like to ask Jackie, pop them in this box right now. So let me just move to the beginning. So the first question here, and I'm just reading them out verbatim. I don't know if you can see them yourself or not, Jackie, so I shall read them out for the benefit of others anyway. In terms of figures or percentages, what kind of difference will these changes make to your bottom line? Um, that one I'm still working on. Um, yes, we, it should make a huge difference. At the moment, I've just noticed more money in the bank because um, like my debtors days, um, have dropped significantly from many, many months to um, less than 30 days. So I've seen the effects in my bank. Um, we're working on the bottom line, um, but that's the reason because um, we're still increasing our prices with our clients, um, but we're also putting more systems and securities in place, which is costing more. So I'm expecting the bottom line to go up within the next year, but it hasn't so far. Um, but that's because of internal changes that we are making to make our accounts practice better. Yep, yeah, that's fair enough. Thank you very much for that. Um, 
as I say, this is Wolves and all, guys. I'm not trying to paint this this glorified picture. And uh, Jackie is still very much in the early stages of implementing this stuff. So I just want to set that expectation as well. So uh, ultimately, um, okay, let me just move on to the next question. Uh, what size fine? Yeah, I, I was going to ask you this as well, actually. So players ask, what size fine do you give to clients? Uh, if they're bringing this stuff late? <laughs> um, we, we're not that mean to them. Um, what we do is if they don't bring it in on time, um, the following month it goes up by £50, and then the following month it goes up by another £50. So it's however long it takes them to bring the paperwork in. Um, they're in control of that, really. Um, but what we do is we put that as a little note on the calendar, so that they are aware of what happens if the um, um, if the paperwork doesn't come in on time. Um, the idea is is that we are reminding them really that we are, we're not there to work long hours when they feel they can turn up with their paperwork or work weekends etc. Um, and if we do end up doing that, they will pay more for our services. Um, that way, we we don't feel so resentful to the client if they brought the stuff in late. We, we're earning more money from it. We can reward the staff more. So um, so yeah, it's not a huge amount, but it's enough sometimes to just hit them in the pocket, and they just get into good habits. Yeah. And as you you kind of suggested, this is an expectation that you set and agree with them, isn't it? Really, in advance, it's not. It's yeah. not a surprise bill or anything like that, is it? So yeah. as you say, they're in control of that, but you've agreed that. Mm. But, um, and, and that's obviously very important. Um, okay, so one from Sean. Uh, how did you approach getting new clients? Um, we've got a very good marketing system in place. Um, we um, Online social media and Google AdWords and things like that works, but um, our testimonials online are absolutely great um, and um, um, people look online for testimonials and they don't see many for accountants. Um, they see ours, they're all five stars um, and they're kept up to date um, and they just pick us as a good accounts practice. Um, we also, um, our clients recommend us. Um, if you give a good service to your clients and they're nice people, um, they will they will just be giving you new clients word of mouth. Um, so that's a, a good earner for us. Um, and I've also got a training company, so I've got a, an extra edge um, or an extra string to my bow. And um, I teach um, accounts and payroll and things like that in the classroom. Um, and I teach businesses, so um, quite often I pick up lots of clients from that as well. So we've got lots of different strings to our marketing bow, um, but we can, you know, we're constantly uh, meeting with new clients, um, and then we decide whether we want to work with them or whether they're not the, the right fit for our accounting practice. And I think that's incredibly powerful, isn't it? Being able to say, or to, to, to tell somebody that they're not right for you. Uh, and, and quite often, and that can change the whole, the, the perception of what you're about, can't it? You know, rather than almost mm. appearing desperate, yes, I'll take anybody on, and then you leave yourself wide open to be negotiated on fee, you're the one that's setting the terms out and saying, actually, we only work with people who meet this kind of criteria. So that is so important, isn't it? Yes. Okay, uh, Peter, obviously your question was about the masterclass, which I think I've answered already. Uh, Gary, um, how have you got the right sort of clients and weeded out the bad ones? Um, right. Um, that was a painful story. <laughs> um, we, I, I left weeding up the bad clients to Heather because she's, um, she's harder than I am. I'm too soft. <laughs> um, and uh, she had a few um, painful meetings with certain people. And, um, you know, we, we, just, we just said we'd find another accountant, basically, and gave them a list of why. Um, so, yeah, but every time we, we sacked a bad client, the relief we felt was was amazing and to be honest we didn't care about the fees um you know it, it wasn't about money it was about having less stress um and what you'll find is that bad clients are the ones that waste your time so um, actually when you get rid of them you don't find really that your fees go down because you can spend more time on the on the good clients um so heather sacked the bad clients um and what i do is when at the initial meeting when a client a new client comes in um, I just say, look, you know, I, I can get you a letter of engagement and, you know, that'll, that will be done today if you decide you want to work with us. But these are the values that JDH has. We want you to be honest. We want you to um, pay your bills when we ask to be paid. 
um, we want you to bring your paperwork in when we ask you to bring your paperwork in um, and we want you to do what you're told if we advise you on something um, we are accountants we we know what's going to work in your business we want to work with you so if you're happy with those very very basic um, tenets of JDH um, if you think they're reasonable then um, we want you as a client. We don't care about your turnover or the size of your business. That's not something that we're interested in. We're interested in working with decent human beings. Um, and um, if you're not any of those things or you, you don't feel comfortable with that, then you know, go and find another accountant. Um, at least at the first meeting, we set out our values straight away um, and they know what to expect. Um, and as I've, I've said before, sometimes clients are a bit like children. <laughs> Um, either you're in control or they are um, and unfortunately if they're in control your life will be hell um, so basically you've got to take control uh, you've got to come across as a kind fair um, decent person that they they feel that they can work with um, but there have to be boundaries and there has to be a line drawn um, so I sort of deal with the new clients and Heather deals with the older ones <laughs> brilliant thank you uh, Dawn has asked, what ABM tools did you use to get started? Oh, let me think, let me think. Um, well, the first thing with us was um, increasing prices, uh, which we're still working on. Um, they've got a fantastic tool um, called Times Up. Um, and basically, one of the, the, the problems we've always had in our accounts practice is how, how do you quote um, and get an accurate price? Um, that's a really difficult one because you don't really know how long it's going to take you um, and exactly what's involved until you actually do the work. Um, so we were constantly losing money hand over fist by quoting the wrong sort of price. Um, one of the first things I learned and used was Time's Up. Um, I'm still working on using it. Um, it's it's um, potential is, is fantastic. Um, but getting the pricing right is absolutely key in an accounts practice if you're going to increase um you know and, and, and make your business better um times up is great um there's lots of um things like simple stuff that works uh which is quite useful um they've got an entire systems builder there where you can um look at um i don't want to give too many things away but um um there's this when the client comes in for the first appointment even um there are forms that you can go through with how good their bookkeeping is um you know when you're deciding how to quote for something um, you know, to find out exactly what they do when they say they do the bookkeeping, because if they don't do a good job, you know, it puts hours and hours of um, time on the work. Um, there's, there's so much information there. It's a bit overwhelming to start with. So what you've got to do is pick one thing, one thing at a time, um, make a difference with that and then move on to the next thing. So um, there are a few, there are a few of the um, tools that I've used with ABN so far. Spot on. Thank you very much. I, I am a little conscious of time as well. I keep saying I'll keep it to 60 minutes and then I tend to, uh, I need to put Sorry. down, I think. Right. Okay. Um, a couple from Claire here. Uh, I'm not sure whether the second one is more for me to answer uh, or, or yourself, but um, Claire's asked, uh, how are you getting better clients? So I'm not sure when that came in, whether you've answered that. Um, go on. I'll, yeah um as i said um when we um when we interview them at the initial appointment um you know we, we go through our our systems and what we expect of the client um getting clients is via the marketing process which um I, i've covered with the different streams um but what we're trying to do is attract better clients um so i think we're doing that via um clients who aren't just looking for an accounts practice that are near them uh, which is when we um, clients look for um, an accounts practice. But um, we've had the information from the clients that um, it's the testimonials that we've got online. Um, they're looking, clients are looking for proactive accountants, looking for accountants that take care of their clients, that are interested in them and they want to make a difference. Um, so the clients that come from directly from the testimonials that are online um, are clients who want a good accountant not just someone who's going to tick box the com compliance and, and that's all. Um, so it is working um, and we're weeding them out through our interview process um, and um, we're just building a better client base at the moment. Spot on. Um, Claire, your question was about what the average fees uh, are these days. I think that's probably something uh, I can better 
um, help with just because we we take sort of uh, details of that from um, surveys etc that we do for people using times up and, and not so uh, I can send you stuff uh, like that through if you're happy with that Claire uh, right then okay so let me um, I just want to share a couple of last things on here then because uh, I did send a couple of bonuses so let me um, just move on to I need to share my screen again don't I? Right, forgive me. Well, first of all, would you please join me in thanking Jackie uh, for her time, her honesty and openness in terms of um, this interview. So uh, please give us a thanks in the, uh, the, the box, the chat box there. And uh, yes, Sean, I will send you that through. So um, yeah, lots of thanks coming in there. So yeah, thank you very much, Jackie. It's to you whether you stay now or not, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, yeah, lots of thanks for winning there as well. Cheers, Jackie. <laughs> All the best. Mm. Right, I am just going to load up my slides because there's just a couple of things I just want to uh, share with you in terms of. Here we go. So earlier on, I, I showed you what we were doing in terms of global impacts. There's another one as well that uh, you can potentially. Um, well help with uh, by attending today's webinar uh, we're sending uh, we're, we're basically putting books into the hands of, uh, of kids in schools in Cambodia for uh, a week uh, there's another one as well now we have a practice diagnostic exercise uh, that you can complete for your practice uh, for every single one of those that's completed we will donate a hundred bricks towards building a house in India in other words we're looking to house a family um, so for me I see this as a bit of a win-win-win so ultimately we're, we're I'm doing research the reason for this is because I want to research what is the current state of the profession right now okay um, the second win is of course a family in India uh, will, will get a house um, forgive my slide that says family in India gets a research report no they don't they get a house uh, and for you you'll get a report off the back of this as well and that report gives you one of the common mistakes that accountants are making in their practice right now that you can avoid making the consequences of those mistakes that you might be able to relate to yourself if you're making them so some principles that you can focus on some strategies to help you overcome those uh, challenges and some recommended actions as well so that's something that uh, if you were to complete that exercise you will get all of those things will happen so just um, give me a yes in the box if you will complete that it's an email I'll send out to you after just giving you the invitation to to complete that that's fantastic so I can see lots of yeses which means uh, we will be making it takes about 8,000 bricks to build a house guys so you know 100 uh, bricks per donation so the more people that complete this uh, the better right then well if you've attended this webinar and you haven't said that you're in and interested in one of those master classes then that really is is the end of this webinar for you if you've said I'm in I would very much like for you just to stay on for a few extra minutes 